we have the clearest indication yet of the divide in the, in the Democratic Party, a divide really in America. That Americans, despite everything that happened on October 7th, the killings, the rapes, the sexual assaults, the hostage taking by Israel, that Americans at all no longer support Israel in its war against Hamas terrorists. We will get to the polling in a minute, but first you need to hear these comments from a very influential person in American politics, podcaster Joe Rogan. If you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is okay as long as we're doing it. And that is what we're saying. And if you're saying that from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust or your, your people, your tribe went through the fucking Holocaust and now you're willing to do it. Okay. A lot of parts of that that are demonstrably untrue, but that's Joe Rogan, who a lot of people in America listen to. Rogan's comments came in response to a new video that appears to show an IDF drone, as you can see, killing four unarmed Palestinians. The videos and others like it are the reason obviously, and the Palestinians are quite good at putting out this kind of propaganda. It came out of Al Jazeera, which, uh, well, there you go. Who knows if the video is accurate? Who knows what the Palestinians are doing? War is a messy business. But the public relations side of the war, Israel is losing badly in the United States, in a country that Israel really needs. 55% of the country, of America, now disapproves of the Israeli military campaign against Gaza. That's a 10-point swing from just a few months ago. Democratic strategist, News Nation contributor Kurt Bardella is with us. Scott Trainer, head of data science for our partners at Decision Desk HQ. We're going to get to Dante from Barstool Sports um, in a little while um, on a different topic. Um, gentlemen, good to see both of you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Kurt, to you. Is the Democratic Party really, Democratic Party really being torn apart? Yeah, I think there is. I think there's absolute legitimacy to the idea that right now we're seeing, as we're seeing right now outside of Radio City Music Hall, a very vocal, demonstrably vocal group of Democrats, uh, people who affiliate with the Democratic Party at least, who are very unhappy with how the Biden administration has addressed the situation in the Middle East. And that chorus hasn't gotten smaller as time has gone on. It's gotten louder. It's gotten more active. We've seen even in some of these primary elections where yep. the outcome may have been decided, but there was that protest vote where they expressed themselves and they are continuing to do so. And in my opinion, that's a big problem for President Biden. All right, Scott, what do we think of the polling itself? Is this is this sort of a reaction to what people are seeing on social media, or is this actually a change in how people really genuinely feel? Well, the Gallup polls gold standard, and so that first number, that is a reaction to what's going on. The second number, the drop in approval of, of support for Israel, down from 50 to 36, that's the more concerning number if you're Israel over the next 10 or 15 years. When you look at the cross tabs of that poll, if you're 18 to 45, that's where they lost most of their support. It's those young people, and those young people are going to be voting for the next 30 or 40 years and, and really moving into it. And so that's kind of, if you're Israel, that is the two numbers you're looking at. Uh, Kurt, how much of this is a problem for President Biden in this sense. When you try to split the baby, when you want, when you try to support Israel, mm -hmm. but also get the support of the people who don't necessarily like Israel and still give them weapons, but want them to hold off on their offensive in Gaza. When you, when you try to have it both ways, you really have neither. Yeah, I think when you try to have it both ways, you lose both sides. And I think that's kind of what's happening right both now. Both sides of his own party. Yes. And I think the challenge here is, especially, again, we have an election set up here where there are factions within both parties that are unhappy with their choice, but this is the choice that we have. So if you're President Biden and you are relying and counting on having the coalition that got you elected in 2020 to show up again in 2024, you cannot afford to alienate any part of that coalition. That could cost you dearly in November. This is a very vocal, very young, and again, the youth vote, it's kind of taken for granted sometimes the Democrats assume, oh, they'll, they'll vote with us. We can't concede well, the, the that issue, they vote for the Donald issue, Trump. The issue, right, Scott, isn't whether or not they're going to vote for Donald Trump. It's whether they just stay home right. and don't vote at all. To that end, uh, did we ever seen that happen, I guess, 2016, maybe a little bit of people staying home rather than voting for Hillary Clinton? Yeah, 2016 is a perfect example. Um, on the Republican side, we saw it a little bit in 2008, but 2016 is a perfect example. The turnout difference between 2016 and 2020 is massive, and that was largely due to enthusiasm around the candidate. One other thing i like to point out, at least on this issue in, in, in relation to the polling, polling is an indication of enthusiasm and fundraising and things like that. And the Israel issue, whether you're pro against what's going on, Pro against the Palestine is a fundraising issue across the board. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below. 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.